something from legends this way comes. Oh. No, no. Hi everyone, this is OG Star Wars, your Legends girl, trying to make it in this, this canon world. And we are going to discuss a little bit about how in the Rise of Skywalker novelization, it is explained now that Palpatine is a clone of his um, original self and how his body has been deteriorating because of how powerful he is and how ironic that is since they um, say that he contains all the Sith if that's the case, then why in the hell can they embody him when he's too powerful for that body? Anyways, but we're going to go ahead and read the Screen Rat report. I was just going to post the, ex the, I guess you could say the page that was shared on social media. Then Screen Rat jumped on it. And I figured let's just go ahead and read what Screen Rat has to say, expand on that, and then expand on um, this compared to Dark Empire, which is a rehash they're bringing Legends back in, a storyline to Palpatine that was used in Legends, and they're doing it in such a awful way that a lot of people who are familiar with the stories, even if they didn't care for the original version, is not really caring for this one either. So let's go ahead and expand on this article by Screen Rat. This article, Star Wars confirms Palpatine was a clone in Rise of Skywalker, the novelization of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, or Palpatine, which I call it, finally reve reveals the truth about how Palpatine survived. He was a clone all along. So this was also predicted as well. And the movie explained it very badly, did not show us exactly how he came back. The movie was poorly written. And so now the novelization is going back and correcting everything that was not expanded on and um, explaining everything as well. So this article is by Thomas Bacon. Mm, Bacon. All right. The novelization of Star Wars, The Rise of Palpatine, um, well, Skywalker, confirms Palpatine was a clone. The Disney era of Star Wars has frequently used novelizations to tie up loose ends from the film themselves. Mm -hmm. All right. In the case Star Wars, The Rise of Palpatine, the film had a starting number of plot holes exactly okay there's the truth right there the writer ray carson will surely be hoping to navigate oh good luck to you marketing for star wars the rise of palpatine had emphasized the unexpected return of emperor palpatine a movie go and moviegoers were eager to learn how darth sidious had survived his death in Return of the Jedi. Exactly. It's very off-putting. And him surviving that, let alone coming back as a clone, basically undoes the arc of Anakin Skywalker for, of Skywalker for how they do this in the movie. Remarkably, the film avoided explaining it at all. The Emperor, that's why we're here, the Emperor ha hand-weaved the questions away with the quote from Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. I, the dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some would consider unnatural, he observed. So basically, this would also go back to the novelization of Darth Plagueis, where it explains how he was trying to find immortality, and Dark Empire expanded on that very well. And it also, to me, the way Dark Empire was done was kind of a nod, or, um, or kind of goes back to, you know, um, exploring the immortality. It has generally been assumed Carson's novelization will shed a little more light on the matter. Okay, and there's a little thing here that says related Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is not the ending of George Lucas's story. We already knew that George Lucas' story ended with his filmmaking, The right, um, Return of Jedi, and expanded through all the novels and games and everything after that, then started filling everything in when the um, um, prequel trilogy came all the way way back into Knights of the Republic, 
beautifully done, beautifully written. Everything expanded and went into the movies. It was a great, great timeline and history from the galaxy far, far away. Although the novelization isn't officially on the sale, on sale until March 17, Lucas Publishing decided to sell advanced copies at this weekend's C2E2 in Chicago and passages have been appearing online. Yep, that's where I've seen it. The book does indeed confirm that the Emperor's spirit has been transferred into a clone body, just like Dark Empire. While Kylo Ren arrives on Exegol, and encounters Palpatines, and Exegol is just a knockoff of this. All right, encounters Palpatine, he looks closely at the machinery the, um, the Emperor is physically attached to and recognizes it from his studies of the Clone Wars. So we have a nod to the Clone Wars here. He then dedu deduces Palpatine's dark side spirit is too strong for the clone body and is causing serious degeneration to it. Now, what was beautifully done with Dark Empire is Palpatine had clones, um, a bunch of clones made so that when his body started aging, he was he easily transferred into the another. Palpatine was very smart like this. However, this one is making him like he's he he doesn't think that way so let's go further into this all the vials were empty of liquid save one which was nearly depleted kylo peered closer he'd seen this apparatus before too when he'd studied the clone wars as a boy the liquid flowing into the living nightmare before him was fighting a losing battle to sustain the emperor's putrid flesh. What could you give me? Kylo asked. Emperor Palpatine lived after a fashion and Kylo could feel in his very bones that his clone body sheltered the Emperor's actual spirit. It was an imperfect vessel. Though unable to contain his immense power, it couldn't last much longer. So that's the thing. It like I said, in Dark Empire, Palpatine had several clones in the making waiting for him so he can transfer his body. Then he was looking to transfer it into baby Anakin Solo's body as well. There are striking similarities between Palpatine's canon resurrection and its return to the old expanded universe. Like Star Wars, The Rise of Palpatine, Tom Veitch's uh, Dark Empire minis uh, miniseries saw Palpatine return. His spirit migrated to a clone body and he constructed a vast army that incorporated sophisticated super weapons. George Lucas, Lucas loved Dark Empire. He considered it the closest thing he, to the, his idea as a sequel trilogy. All right, so George Lucas helped put together Dark Empire, he approved it and everything, and Dark Empire came before the prequel trilogy. So when you look at that and then you look at the Chosen One arc, it doesn't fully match up because one, this Dark Empire came before the prequel trilogy and gave copies to Lucasfilm employees as a Christmas present. See, evidence that George read his own EU and participated in it. The key differences, however, is that the Dark Empire, the clone body, was actually able to contain Emperor's spirit. Exactly. So even though it aged fairly well, he had many as a backup, it still was able to contain his own essence. Um, and he transferred his body through Sith, Sith alchemy. So I'm curious if this is even going to explain that. Exposure to the dark side of the force has always had a pronounced effect on the physical body, causing an advanced form of decay. Some, particularly more than others, I guess. That's why many Sith Lords appear cadaverous, because the stronger they become in the, they be, they become in the dark side, the more notable its effect. Palpatine is the greatest of all Sith, and it makes perfect sense that no mere clone body can contain his essence. Okay, 
Again, so if it cannot contain his essence, not even his own clone body, then how in the hell is he going to embody many of the Sith? It doesn't make sense. The novelization subtly hint that Emperor had waited as long as he can, watching the galaxy fall into chaos once again, but now has no choice but to reveal himself. Hmm. You would think that he would wait maybe a short period of time um, and got into action when his body was still healthy, young, and all that, instead of waiting where he is basically, his body's disintegrating from his immense power. So that does not make sense whatsoever. You want to be in your best physical form. That's why in Dark Empire, it happened how many years? About 10 years or less, a little bit less than that, um, from Return of the Jedi. So it happened in a short period of time. He gathered himself, he collected himself, he made sure his clones were um, great. He made, he, like Rise of um, Palpatine, created an army and all this. It happened in a shorter time frame. All right. His clone body is completely fa failing him. His running out of the regener regenerative formulas that have been keeping him alive all these years. And he needs a new host. How come he didn't make any cl more clone bodies? like in the dark empire how come he doesn't send off for to get more of the regenerative formulas to help him sustain himself so this does not make sense whatsoever palpatine was smarter than that when we see him in legends so this palpatine is not a smart cookie because look at he didn't even he didn't even stop doing his um force lightning when ray was shooting it or reflecting it back to him if he is that friggin' strong, he would have countered that. So it doesn't make sense whatsoever. It's nice to have an explanation of sorts, but something of the of a shame it wasn't a Star Wars Rise of Scar Skywalker itself, or in the Star Wars Rise of Palpatine itself. All right, so that's the end of the article. And so we're going to touch basis on this a little bit more and look at Dark Empire and compare and contrast. Although Palpatine's um, clone resurrection, I guess you can say, or reborn as it's stated in The Dark Empire was not well received by a lot of fans because of um, Anakin Skywalker's Chosen One arc, it was done well. For me, it was done well. And why I say that is I also referred back when we were viewing the Screen Rants um, article about it, is that you can link this back to Darth Plagueis about how he is trying to find the immortality. And at the time, Palpatine was his apprentice. And so he was trying to find immortality, learning about Sith alchemy and transferring yourself into a clone version of yourself. Now, in the original lore or legends in Thrawn trilogy, and after that, um, we do see or hear or read that you know, like Mara Jade was like, I'm not even sure if that was really Palpatine. And I think that was all the way back in um, the duology, Hand of Thrawn. And so she wasn't even sure about, you know, Palpatine coming back. And that was really, really him. When you look at cloned people, beings, it's not really the essence of them, especially when it's Force users like Sabayoth. He was a dark Jedi, I guess you can say, and basically a crazy Force user or crazy Jedi. And um, so that's where that logic comes from. So in Dark Empire, we have Luke Skywalker that um, he, he ends up on Biss as um, Darth Sidious, our Palpatine's, you know, apprentice. And he goes in there trying to get in try, with the sort of insurgent trying to destroy Palpatine on the inside and also to learn a little bit more about the dark side. And from there... Um, he gets under his rule a little bit and we see that the twins, basically Leia and Luke, you know, um, defeat Palpatine and he wants to embody Leia's um, child's Anakin Solo's body so that he can have a younger body to grow up in and, um, you know, again, try to rule the galaxy. And this was also prophesized and Leia was given a holocron with Boda Boss in there um, as the teacher, as the informer, and she um, opened it. And this is what she is told by him. A brother and sister born to walk 
the sky, but reckless brother falls into dark side's eye. Jedi sister carries hope for the future in her womb. Only she can save the Skywalkers from certain doom. A Jedi killer wants to tame her. Now the dark side Lord comes to claim her. She must battle, join against this thief, or the destiny of all the Jedi will come to grief. Boda Boss. So in this, and I'm going to keep this short, in the story Dark Empire, we have the Skywalker twins fulfilling their family, and this is how I see it, their family's destinies as Skywalker, as their father, as a chosen one, and defeating the clone, or basically the force spirit of Palpatine. And in the end, we do see that Han shoots, um, shoots Palpatine as well, and you know, from there, he's ended. And I'm not going to try to give too much spoilers if you have not read the um, comics or even listened to the holodrama. But in the end, we have the Skywalker twins finally defeating this version of Palpatine, which basically comes about through Sith alchemy into a clone. And to me, it seals in what the Skywalkers were to the galaxy. Anakin, the chosen one, killing Palpatine and ridding the um, the galaxy of the Sith, and then his son and his daughter ridding the galaxy of Palpatine as a clone and his basically his spirit from the galaxy, and it still is a little bit shady, I guess you can say, with you know what we think of Anakin's um, chosen one. But when you think about the overall plot with this one, it goes a little bit well or better with the original lore. When you look at Rise of Skywalker, all the Skywalkers are dead. And it takes a Palpatine to kill him. And then she assumes Skywalker's name. It's not by blood. The Force never made her. So it does not make sense. And even how Palpatine contains himself in the clone doesn't make sense because when we see him in Legends, he's a lot smarter and cunning than what we see in Rise of Palpatine or Rise of Skywalker. So that's all I have to say about that. Comment below. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know. Even I know it's what's best of the, what's better of the two evil, I guess you can say, between Legends and now Disney canon. So share below what you think, like and subscribe, share this video. Let's start a conversation with this and expand on a little bit more. Tell me what you may like about Dark Empire if you've ever, ever read the comics or listened to the holodrama or whatever. Thank you so much for listening and coming to my channel, expanding your knowledge with the original lore. May the force be with you and I will talk to you later.